So about a month ago, I went up to Midwest Photo to borrow some gear for this particular video. Uh, this video is sponsored by Midwest Photo. Our idea was to do an Instagram Live on my Instagram where you guys could choose what gear I borrowed for a video, and I chose a few of my favorite things, things that caught my attention, and what you guys ended up choosing was the KB Canon 4x5 kit. It was between that and a few 35mm cameras, and it had been eight years since I shot 4x5, but that's what we went with, and as a result of that, that got the itch for me to get back into large format. So without this video, I probably wouldn't be shooting large format right now, so I am very, very thankful for that. So thank you guys for choosing, and thank you Midwest Photo. So I got the KB Canon kit, a 180mm lens, got everything I needed, and then Kevin from Midwest Photo brought out a couple packs of FP100C. He was like, why don't you shoot a pack of this with our Polaroid Big Shot and then you can give a pack away as well just as sort of like a little bonus on the video which I thought was an amazing idea super thankful for that but then as I kind of got the 4x5 kit set up here in the office and I started just messing around with it I remembered having a Polaroid 405 back way back in the day uh, basically this shoots your standard size FP100C you know three and a quarter by four and a quarter that will work on a graph lock back on a 4x5 camera. So you're not shooting 4x5 instant film, but you're shooting that instant film through a 4x5. So I hopped on eBay, bought a new old stock, you know, one that had never been opened or anything like that, uh, except when I opened it up, you know, it had, you know, crust in the rollers because it was definitely used many times. And the little spring that keeps the tension on the film pack was broken off. So I super glued that back together. And my mint new old stock 405 was as good as new. I decided to go this route instead of using the Polaroid Big Shot, even though it was very kind of Midwest to loan me that. I wanted to make sure I got the absolute most out of these exposures because this film is so precious. It's been discontinued for a long time, and I wanted to make sure I could manually control my entire exposure. But I took everything, and I decided to do a shoot in the studio here in our office space of my good friend Tyler, who also works here, and then Nathan as well. Nathan was there to film everything, but I also shot some portraits of him, and then he ended up turning the camera on me and shot the last frame of me. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We recorded the entire thing, and then I went to import the footage and realized that my Atomos Ninja 5, I didn't have the audio, the right channel selected, basically, so none of the audio got recorded. Love that. Uh, basically, what I decided to do to kind of salvage all of this is cut together a little montage of our time in the studio, and I'm going to do my best to kind of walk you through that through narration. Um, I've never made a video like this before, so here we go. So for all of these photos, I used continuous light rather than flash in the studio. Uh, flash would have been a great option, honestly, because with large format lenses, they have leaf shutters, meaning the shutter is inside the lens, so you can sync at any shutter speed. But I didn't have a PC sync cord long enough, and I don't have any radio triggers anymore. All of my strobe lights have uh, basically just proprietary triggers. So I went ahead and just used continuous light. I have a 120D in a rapid box, and then a tiny little aperture MC on a monopod as my hair or rim light. And if you've never seen a large format camera in use before, hopefully this video will give you a little bit better of an idea as to what it actually looks like in use and all of the steps you have to take. I used to shoot this film all of the time. I mean, I would be driving around with a back seat that was just covered in drying prints and drying negatives. Uh, it was one of my favorite films to shoot, especially 3000B. Uh, it's just such a special format. It's always a lot of fun shooting with Tyler. Uh, we've shot photos a handful of times together, but I see him every day at work, one of the best dudes, and uh, we had a really good time shooting in there. He had never seen FP100C or any pack film like that, uh, he's actually gotten really into shooting with his SX-70, which has been amazing, uh, but he'd never shot any film like that. So him seeing the prints and seeing everything, you know, in real time, it was super cool to, to share that with him for the first time. 
I was kind of nervous that we would have some issues with focus because uh, it's not just sliding in you know, a 4x5 film holder. Uh, it's actually taking the ground glass off, attaching another thing, pulling out this dark slide, which can be a little bit of a pain to work with. Uh, but luckily, even shooting everything at f5.6, which is wide open, uh, we had focus hit every single time. Although because the ground glass is meant for a 4x5 negative, not a 3 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter, it was a little tough to gauge where exactly the crop was going to happen. I could have taken masking tape and figured this out and masked it all off, but that's just not really how I like to work, so we just kind of winged it. Wung it? Winged it? We made it work. Uh, a couple frames had some crops that I wasn't really fond of, but you know, it is what it is. With the Aperture MC, uh, it's an RGB light, so I wanted to play around a little bit with uh, throwing some color, mixing it in with sort of that soft blue backdrop that we had, and just playing around with the light a little bit, bringing it in a little bit closer to have that fall off happen a little bit quicker. I didn't want any of my key light to spill onto the backdrop and essentially wash out the color. This film was expired in 2018, but it's all been properly stored, and the photos came out looking just as if the film was fresh. Rather than using the black side of the V-flat, I went ahead and flipped it around to the white side just to get a little bit more bounce, and then I turned the Aperture MC around and threw some color just over Tyler's shoulder there, and then I just used the V-flat to cut the light a little bit so that way it wasn't going directly into the lens to cause any kind of haze. After shooting with Tyler for a while, he took the SL2 off of Nathan's hands, and then it was time to get a couple portraits of young Nathan himself. I really do wish we had audio of all of this as I was talking through my exposure and some of my thoughts just kind of thinking out loud. We'll be sure to do something like this again where I can actually talk through everything out loud, and of course I've got plenty of 4x5 videos in the works already. And this music's getting a little too serious, so let's have some fun, let's change it up. That right there is the official Young Nathan senior portrait. After that, we took the Aperture MC and pointed it directly at the white side of the V-flat just to bounce some of that light back onto Nathan. I didn't want to point it directly onto him. I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle and more of a glow rather than any kind of hard light. And then it was my turn. I really never like photos of myself, uh, that's, that's for sure. Your boy is built like a turtle, but uh, young Nathan was itching to get his hands on this camera and try it out for himself, and uh, yeah, we ended up making a photo that I'm pretty happy with. I usually don't like photos of myself, but this one's alright. All in all, after an hour in the studio, I'm pretty happy with what we walked away with. A few of the photos I'm really, really stoked on, especially this one right here of Tyler and this one of Nathan. I hope you guys enjoyed our video from the studio. I had a lot of fun on that shoot. I'm pretty happy with most of the photos. I had a few issues, you know, with composition and uh, guessing where the frame was going to cut off and things like that. But overall, I am happy and I'm happy I got a chance to shoot some of this film because it had been so long. And of course, if you want to win the other pack of FP100C, Midwest Photo was gracious enough to donate a pack to give away. Just leave a comment on this video and in a week's time, I will pick a random comment 
anybody in the world, everybody can enter. I'll pick a comment and pin that one to let you know that you have won. And uh, yeah, simple as that. No need to repost or anything like that. Uh, just really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I feel like it was a little bit longer. Uh, and of course the audio issue, that was a major bummer, but you know, we're making chicken salad out of chicken. But that's it for today. Huge, huge thanks to Midwest Photo. Of course, if you have anything you need for photo, video, film, or digital, everything you need is at Midwest Photo. If you need to buy film, develop your film in their dark room or make your own prints or rent gear from their rental department, buy new or used, they have literally every Everything you could possibly need so if you're in the area in Columbus Ohio definitely make time to stop in there but if you're anywhere else in the world you can always order online at impex.com thank you guys for watching this video super appreciated um, if you have any questions at all let me know but again leave a comment if you want to win that pack of FP 100 C that's it for today I love you guys I'll see you next time